Gabrielle Bernstein is my guest. She was once a 20-something hip girl looking for a great boyfriend, the perfect pair of shoes, and the hottest clubs in New York to make her happy. Today, she's found another route to happy. Her guidebook is called May Cause Miracles, and you're on the route to happy if you're not happy most of the time. And I see a big sparkler on your finger. So obviously, <laughs> obviously that guy came around. Yes, yes. That is the guy that I write about in Spirit Junkie, actually. And so if people get excited, that's the guy? You're marrying mm -hmm. him? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And tell me about him. So he's wonderful. He's a miracle worker as well. And I think this is an important message for any listeners is that if you're a woman or a man on a spiritual path, but your partner may not be on the exact same path, just trust that you being on your path will inspire them mm -hmm. greatly. And you need to be the lighthouse. And that was the experience with us. So change yourself. Yeah. Don't try to change someone else. You cannot. And also, this is a big important point. You don't need to share your practice with other people either, unless they ask for it. But otherwise, just mind your own life, right? You know, you have your practices in your life, and trust that as your light begins to shine brighter, the other people in your life will say, I want what she has. I need to do what she does. Mm, it's an energy. It's total energy, yeah. It's a light of sorts. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds a little woo-woo, but it is. It's well, a listen, light inside. People are fine with woo-woo. We're open to all of it yeah, now, I think. We're okay, yeah, we yeah. just made it all fine and permission. Let your there. little light shine. Well, we all want to be happier, right? Mm -hmm. So, of just, course. Who cares about of course, the language? and there's some tough times, as yeah. you know, around the world, and, and there always will be. Yeah. So, there is a way to uh, deal with it and a way not to deal with it. Forgiveness. Yes. Where does that fit in well, your life? Where should it fit in our lives? I think that forgiveness is one of the most important, cru crucial tools on a spiritual path. And I think that if you want to be happier in your life, that forgiveness is mandatory. And what forgiveness offers us is it really helps us just clear our slate. It helps us release our past resentments and start to move forward with less anger, less resentment, less attack, and to have that really open-hearted way of living. And when we hold on to a resentment, we stay stuck in the behavior. So something might have happened to you 10 years ago, and if you keep holding on to the resentment, you're replaying, repurposing, and re-experiencing that negativity from 10 years ago every mm -hmm. single day of your life. So if you forgive someone, you, you let that energy go, obviously. But sometimes yes. in a horrific situation, it would be very difficult to forgive someone yes. who killed uh, your child yes. or ran over your dog or... Yes. Well, remembering though, this treated is you terribly your whole life, and it's not easy. It's not easy no. because our ego wants us to hold on to the anger and wants to say, mm -hmm. you know, don't let that go. You need to make sure that they get, you know, they get what they deserve. All of that craziness. But once again, just like I said before, if we hold on to that resentment, we replay, repurpose, and re-experience that experience over and over again. Do we want to live like that? Well, I suspect you don't have to like it. No. But you can still forgive. Well, that's the thing is that that's exactly right. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you always stick around. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to be in the person's life. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness means that you set yourself free. That's the most important part is that forgiveness is a gift you bestow upon yourself. So if Mr. Magic uh, said to you when you get off the plane, I'm done, Gabrielle, we're finished. I don't. I doubt that will happen. Yeah, I don't even want to put that uh, out there. <laughs> no, I'm not a psychic of any sort. But uh, how would you deal with that? Something like that? Yeah, not specifically I mean, him. I think. I think any tragedy in your life, you have a lot of le levels and mm -hmm. layers of experiencing your your pain and your discomfort. Sure. And the way that I handle problems and traumas is that the first thing I do is I let them come up. I let myself act out. I let myself get angry. I let myself curse and scream and, and say all the nasty things mm -hmm. that I need to say so that they can be healed and they can come forward. And then immediately I go into the process of being open and willing to forgive. And that doesn't mean that you forgive right away. That just means that you have opened the door and set the intention and, and really invited that experience to come into your life. And then in time, one day at a time, you start to feel that there are more opportunities for healing that come to you. Teachers come into your life, practices come into your life, things come up so that you can have them healed. And so the real work is just to stay open and willing to forgive, and that's when you can really begin the path. Mm. Uh, one, of, one of the greatest fears, fear, fear of death. Well, I think the more spiritual you become, the less fearful you are of death. I, I can say this truly, authentically, I mean this deeply. You start to have a greater understanding and that veil is lifted between this world and what you may be able to see without your physical sight. Mm -hmm. And that may sound too heady for people, but I can guarantee that if you open up to a spiritual path of any kind, you'll heighten your level of experience of what happens uh, when you are no longer in the physical form. It feels better. 
Sure does. Well, when, when you, you start think about to have if you stronger... believe that you go somewhere or that your your energy moves and you or that you come back, yeah, it's not so scary to die. And I believe that when you're on a spiritual path, that doesn't that's no longer just a thought. That's mm. a that's a knowing. That's a genuine sense of mm -hmm. faith. And and that's not easy for everyone to comprehend because people really live in the space of like this is it, this is here and now. Um, but if you open up your psychic awareness and you really open up your ing, right? you start to really intuitively know that this, is, this isn't it. Uh, back to your uh, uh, core lessons from The Course in Miracles. Was it channeled? Tell me about The Course, the Course in, Miracles in Miracles. is channeled. Is so channeled? Was, yes, yes. Two professors, uh, they were atheists. They had been having a lot of turmoil in their department. They came together and said, we need a miracle of some kind. And mm -hmm. then one of the women, Helen Shookman, started to receive this very authoritative voice in her dreams. And she kept hearing this voice calling her to scribe. And so she started to work with her, her became partner in this mission, to, uh, William Thetford, to, to scribe over several years, scribe A Course in Miracles. Mm. And so channeling, channeling spirits mm -hmm. to speak through them. Yeah. When we look at some celebrities who we don't know, but we watch them work in their world, Lady Gaga, for instance, she seems to me to be totally grounded, honest, speaking her truth, doing what she loves. I have no idea. Don't know Gaga. She's on a spiritual path. She mm. is. She is a. She is a self-proclaimed spiritual woman, and that is one of the keys to her successes. That is is one of them. That is the key to her success, and that is the key to all of the adversity that she has overcome, and how she continues to maintain the energy and the spirit of what it is that she does. Interesting. I'm grateful for what I have. I welcome all. Yeah. I'm. Uh, well, she's obviously extremely talented, but she's. But she busts a few barriers as Madonna did. Yeah. And, well, Madonna, too, another woman on a spiritual do. path. I think when you see people that are living in their real, real authentic power, people mm -hmm. that can create major movement, Barack Obama is another great example. Mm -hmm. They are people that believe in God. They have a spiritual path. They have faith guiding them. And that, that is a core, core key ingredient to uh, success in a worldly form. So if you're not there, yeah. if you're really lost, yeah. and you're sad and you don't have... Uh, much joy in your life and nothing seems to be working where do you begin uh, you well here the book. 40 day yeah I'm, I'm, 40 I'm, I'm, days I'm not even kidding that's it that, that may cause will, miracles will change your whole mm -hmm. life I mean I, I have um, thousands and thousands of people tweeting to me Facebooking saying uh, I'm on day four and my life has already changed really yep how so when you're willing to change and mm -hmm. you open a book that's giving you direction and you say, oh, I can see this differently, that's the miracle. It can happen in the first page. You wanted to change your life. That was clear. And you wanted to be in the New York Times bestseller list. And you are. Yes. Yeah. Where were the hurdles? I'm well, sure there know, were many. Okay, so, but so Spirit Junkie, this one, when I, right. when I put this book out, I sat with you here a year ago, a little mm -hmm. more than that. Totally different energy that I put into that book. I was in a different place in my life. I was really wanting to get it out there and make sure everybody heard about it and make sure the story was... And a lot of people bought that book, but it didn't have the same... There wasn't the same energy behind it. Now mm. there is, because there's a whole new energy within me. So this book is getting a whole resurrection as this one is out there in the world as well. But with this book, I was living in a space of knowing. And my favorite message from A Course in Miracles is... Those who are certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. And that energy. Just know it so will peaceful. happen. Just know Just and know believing. everything will be okay. And that gives you the energy and the faith and the experience of flow, which really helps you take the physical action, right? So mm -hmm. it's not like I just prayed and this thing happened. This New York Times bestseller is a New York Times bestseller because I took action from a spiritual intention. Do you uh, physically say the words, I am love, I am light? Yeah. It's one thing to say the words. It's another thing to, to know believe yeah. the words or to know them or yeah. to feel them. Yeah. And you can have that visceral experience through meditation. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we have a lot of spiritual practices that are very heady, you know, affirmations and just saying things. But I want to mix that with the visceral experience of getting into your body and having a meditative moment and a meditative right. experience. Sure. And so... When you're breathing, your breath is one of the greatest tools to experiencing life flow. It is not one of, it is the greatest. Okay, and what do you do when you have an evil thought? Mm. I think uh, evolved masters have yeah. evil thoughts. Yeah, so the, the practices in this book is exactly what I do. I witness the thought and I say, oh, that's ugly. That's not, I don't like, that's not me, that's not my <laughs> right. truth, right? Mm -hmm. I uh, then become willing to see it differently. 
So I say, okay, I'm willing to see this differently. So that could be through a prayer. I, you know, I, I surrender this. I'm willing to let this go. I'm willing to have this be reinterpreted. I, I surrender this. Then the third step is to choose to see it differently. That's starting to affirm a new, a new thought form. Okay, this doesn't seem right, but I, I choose to believe that it could be this. Or this doesn't seem logical, but I believe in miracles, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. And then I start to focus on what I'm grateful for. And then I ask myself, who do I need to forgive? There are so many people who are kind of positive pants. They appear to be positive pants, but you intuitively know they're not like that really. There's Absolutely. something wrong. You feel it. Mm -hmm. You feel it. You can sense BS anywhere. Right? And truth. Yes. And truth. People can feel truth through a tweet. People can feel truth the moment someone walks in the door. And really, you know, as an individual, if you're expressing your truth or if you're not. Absolutely. And authenticity. I know we overuse it. I, Living I the authentic life. But it, uh, you know when someone is and you know when someone isn't. Well, someone in the show mm -hmm. I did today earlier, someone said to me, you know, well, what's the key to success? And I said the key to success is really stepping into your authentic power. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, a 40-day guidebook of subtle shifts, subtle, for radical change and unlimited happiness may cause miracles. How nice to see so you again. So good to be back with you. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Uh, remember, you can catch our conversations on YouTube or follow me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer. There will be many more spirited, spunky guests to come. Thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today.